Welcome to the show. I'm Nikki Eisenhower, and this is Emotional Badass, where Moxie meets Mindful. On today's episode, we're going to discuss self-care for HSPs and empaths when it comes to family relationships. Highly sensitive people and empaths as a group, as a tribe, we hold a lot of hope for our fellow human being. On this self-care journey, this journey of healing, of figuring out my high sensitivity, figuring out what it means to be an empath, what I've struggled with and what I see so many, almost all of my HSP empath clients struggle with is having to really face the truth and reality of many of our relationships. I think deep down, a lot of the struggle in accepting our high sensitivity boils down to our relationships. What do I mean by that? I think a lot of us really want to have more of a bandwidth for other human beings than we really have. And because we have a lot of hope, I think we show up again and again and again in relationships that, for the most part, drain us. We show up for the energy vampires in our lives with a lot of hope that we can just hang out, that we can just be friendly, that we can be cordial, that we can hang out on holidays, that we can just do things and it be easy. And we hold that hope despite evidence over and over and over again in some of our friendships or in some of our family relationships or even in our romantic relationships or even professional circles. We hold hope that it'll be different, that that if I just do it right, then it won't drain me or zap me. It won't be frustrating. It won't zap my creativity. It won't make me feel depressed. We keep coming to the table in some of our most difficult relationships holding this hope because hope is a beautiful thing. I've never met an HSP that is willing to just quickly throw hope out of the window. I think before we walk away or even adjust our boundaries with another human being, we often feel like we have to get to a place, maybe even like AA talks about, like how an alcoholic or an addict has to hit bottom before they make the necessary changes to make their lives better. I think HSPs and empaths are very similar. We will keep giving and keep hoping and giving and hoping until we hit a rock bottom. And only then from this rock bottom broken puddle of a place, do we then give ourselves permission to actually step back and away from some of these human beings that are zapping our energy? Now, it's tricky to talk about, I think, because of where personal responsibility lies. And the truth of things for me is that there are people on the planet that just suck my energy. If I face that, if I own the reality of that, now now hear that with a lot of nuance, right? Because I, I think the average person hears that and goes into, let me go into a case like I'm a lawyer in court about why this other person is draining and difficult and why I have enough proof to prove my case to be able to see them less or move away or even desire a different relationship a relationship that can work for me. Because for the non-HSP, non-empath people in the world, I don't think they have the same struggle with me that I can often have with them. So part of this dynamic is that the other part of this difficult energy vampire relationship that might be in my life is probably never really going to be able to understand why I make some changes. If there is one thing that unites us as Americans, um, and I'm making an overgeneralization, but if there's something that that makes uh, that all of us kind of grow up with the messaging and the belief system, I would say that that family is the religion of America. We worship family. Family values are talked about in every political way that we see. Family values are are put at the top of, of a value pyramid. 
we hear messages about blood. Um, I know for myself and my other clients who have had to go through the dark night of the soul to leave some very dysfunctional family systems. What's shocking about that process is that as hard as it is to go through the process of that, it is just as hard, maybe in some ways even harder, to see the discomfort on the faces of other people. I can't tell you how many times I have had someone stutter with a blank, shocked look when they hear that I don't have a relationship with my mother and say, but but you only have one mother. It's as if the wheels turning in their brain cannot even process it. It's a thing that scares me to put together and say out loud on the show, but I've often had the thought and wanted to do more talking and research and maybe even a workshop. I don't know what's going to develop for me in this. Maybe a book on this topic one day, or maybe it goes to the well of lost ideas. But I think we've got some really dysfunctional beliefs that hold healing back for sensitives and HSPs. That's what I'm trying to highlight today. I'm coming off of watching for the very first time the HBO series, The Sopranos. And what fascinated me about that show, other than the therapy aspects, was that you could really see how this very dysfunctional family, a family where the dad is a murderer and violent, but he still believes that he is a very good person. And they believe, knowing who their father is and what he's mixed up in, that they are a very good all-American family. That Sopranos family has very strong family values. And growing up Italian, growing up Catholic, maybe that hit me in some personal ways. If we aren't allowed to psychologically and emotionally leave our family nest and go out into the world and really discover who we are separate and different from that family, my argument is, how is a family different than a cult? In healthier family systems, the children, as they're growing up, as they're aging into adulthood, they're often encouraged to explore, encouraged to be different. Those holidays, those celebrations, weddings, family gatherings, they are a gathering of the difference as they come back together, sharing what they've learned about the world themselves and there's more of a climate of celebrating each other, even when those differences, whether it's pink hair or blue hair or um, gender nonconformity, sexual orientation, religion, uh, being tattooed or not, no matter what those differences are, those families seem able to give freedom to those to the family's children to be able to come back to the family and enrich them. Children who are celebrated for their uniqueness, for their individuality, what I find is they tend to like to go back home for holidays. They miss their parents, their siblings, their aunts and uncles. Now, if you're hearing that and you're thinking, well, that's not my family, I grin and bear it. I tuck all of who I am inside of me and I show no vulnerability when I go back home. There's no room in my family to explore, to be different. I'm a family systems therapist. It's a big part of my training and a big part of the lens that I see the world through. In family systems where the children are shamed for exploring who they are and their dreams and their ambitions and their curiosities, they grin and bear going back home. For highly sensitive people and empaths, what I'm seeing more and more and more is we, we are actually at higher risk to have autoimmune disease, depression, and anxiety. The mind-body connection is a powerful thing. Healing is respecting what our mind and body is trying to tell us, listening. When we don't, our body doesn't have any other option than to get sick. In recovery, in self-care, in soul care, what we learn is the difference between an excuse, a self-manipulation, and a good reason to say yes and to say no. We work on the difference between intuition versus anxiety so that our intuition can guide us towards what is healthy and guide us away from what isn't. We work on people-pleasing 
so that we learn where I end and where you start so that I'm making sure that my super sensitive empathic parts aren't trying to function for what you need before I've even figured out what I need in the world or what my job or role is in taking care of me. So how do I end this episode? I encourage you to sit, just to sit, maybe close your eyes and go inward. And just consider what this episode might mean to you. Notice as you try to process what this means, what boundaries you might need differently in your life. Notice how hope comes up. I encourage you to shift your hope from hope in other people that they will do better or be better or be easier or be more compassionate or be more thoughtful or more understanding. That you pull that hope in at least a little bit. Use your hope for you. Hope in what you can change. Hope in what you can accomplish. Hope in what you can heal. Hope in what boundaries you can set up. Hope in your soul care so that you can take the very best care of yourself so that you can feel fulfilled in this lifetime. It's really easy to look at those energy vampires and think, oh, this must be all your fault because you're sucking my energy. Bad energy vampire. Don't give power away that way. I retain my power when I look out into the world and I say to myself, as self-care, my life is my responsibility. I will not allow people to drain me anymore. I want to thank some more people who have taken the time and energy and effort to get on iTunes and write us a five-star review. Now, maybe I didn't think this out very well (laughs) because some of these names are a little goofy, but it's making me laugh. So I want to thank Twingle Twat. Yep, you got me. Thank you for the sweet review and the funny name. RGR2060, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Topper Trina 08, thank you too. Bunch of gobbledygook letters. Thank you for such a sweet, sweet review. And the last person I want to thank today, the name on their profile is just the best. So I can't do better than that, ending the show there. Thank you so much. Please, guys, if you like what we're doing here at Emotional Badass, it does take a team. This is so much work. Those of you who are doing more than getting on iTunes and writing that review, which is everything in the podcast world are getting on Patreon and helping us out there. We're really close to our first goal. Thank you so much, you guys, for helping getting this out into the world and helping us be emotional badass. I am because you are. We all are emotional badass. I'm Nikki Eisenhower, life coach and psychotherapist, and this is where Moxie meets Mindful. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.